it's like 123 days since my surgery and I know I did a three month update and I kind of throw information in there periodically in the videos that I do but um, this is specifically just an update um, I don't know how many months it's been May June May June July August so it's been over four months um, and actually today is my four month surgery now that I think about it because I had my surgery on May 4th and today is September 4th oh what a great day to do an update <laughs> um, so I have been getting a lot of people complimenting me saying oh my gosh you look great how are you feeling um, that seems to be like the going thing when I see people lately um, and I want to share with you my thoughts and feelings about that because I think it's super important that we know that it's normal to go through some of the things that I'm going through. Um, at least I think they are. Uh, listening to other people that have gone through the surgery, I've heard the same kind of thing. So I'm thinking that it is. Um, but it's so difficult for me to register in my head the fact that I've lost so much weight so quickly. And also, for me specifically, I wasn't always a big girl. I wasn't always overweight. And so part of my head still is in super denial that I was as big as I was for the time that I was. And so my head is really going through a very strange whirlwind of emotions and feelings and thoughts and somewhat still kind of denial but you know in other areas and I just I want you guys to know that that kind of emotional roller coaster is so common and it's okay and it's just a matter of reconnecting with who you are as an individual rather than what you looked like or maybe what you felt like um I know for me, I, I know I did not feel good. I was not feeling good. And the reason I know that I was a very sick woman is because of how good I feel now. And so the common answer for me yesterday was, if I feel as good as you say I'm looking, I must feel and look amazing. So it's, it's a strange realization kind of because guys I feel so much better like I have not felt this good since I was maybe even pre-pregnancy I mean after pregnancy I had some some times in my life that I felt really good but I feel like I continually started gaining weight after um after my second divorce, I think, is when I really started packing on the weight. Um, and I remember when I met Ben, I used to call it my happy fat, that I was happy and so I was gaining weight. And I gave myself permission to do that, which is not a good thing to do. Um, there's, thing, there's, there's a time to have positive thoughts and positive... Um, sorry. There's a time to have positive thoughts and be able to change a thought that's negative into a positive one and that ain't one of them I <clears throat> I know for me at this point four months out my energy level is back granted there are days that I feel like I still don't have a lot of energy but I think that's a normal feeling for any human being that we have days that we didn't get enough sleep or you know maybe I didn't wear my CPAP well the night before or maybe I did a lot the day before and so the next day I'm dragging butt um, you know so I think that that is a very normal 
fluctuation for most, if not all human beings. So I'm not concerned about the days that I don't feel peppy. Um, matter of fact, today I, it's not that I don't feel peppy. I felt, I had a shake this morning. Um, and I mixed, I had a banana premier protein shake and I mixed some PB2 in it, which is the, uh, protein powder of peanut butter. And I must have drank it too fast because I had such severe pain in my stomach area, which is like right below your sternum, which is that pit, which is where your stomach actually is. Um, it was discomfort and pain that I couldn't seem to shake. And so I mentioned something on our group page um, on Facebook and they were all like, yeah, it sounds like gas. It sounds like gas. Maybe take some gas X. And somebody also stated that sometimes when you drink too fast, you can get that. And then I had somebody also say that when you mix the protein shakes with something else, that it creates a lot of foam, which it does. And that's just gas. It's just air. So if you're drinking that, <clears throat> you're actually putting a lot of gas in air into your stomach, which obviously is not good for gastric bypass. <clears throat> so, um, you know, we learn every day. I'm still learning four months out and I'm still learning. I still get a ways to go to understand my new tool, my new pouch, my new, uh, teeny tiny tummy, my T3. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it's, it's ups and downs and I'm okay with that because there are a lot more ups than downs right now. And before surgery, there were a lot more downs than ups. Matter of fact, I don't remember a lot of ups before surgery. So I spent a good, <clears throat> I want to say that I spent a good eight years of my life in the last eight years, progressively getting worse. And the last two years of my life were the worst. And that is why I made the decision to have the surgery in the first place. It wasn't so much to lose the weight for cosmetic reasons. It was to become healthier. I was so, I, you know, <clears throat> sorry, I don't know why my throat is all uh, weird this morning. I went to a funeral yesterday <clears throat> and the funeral was for a man that I grew up with. His son was one of my best friends growing up. We lived three houses apart. We were born three days apart and his dad passed away um, the other day and I felt obligated to go to that funeral. I don't do funerals usually, um, but at this one I, I needed to go. And while we were there, my uncle, um, who was there because it was a close, they were close family friends anyway, um, he looked at me and I told him, I said, you know, I call him Mononc because it's French. Um, I said, I didn't realize how sick I was. And I said, and I'm so very blessed that I went down this path to have this surgery. And he looked at me and he goes, you didn't want to end up like your dad, did you? And I almost cried because it's the first time that somebody else recognized why I did what I did. Um, without me having to say it or to try and convince somebody that what my decision was, was a good decision based on my health and not necessarily my weight. Um, which is why I don't like calling it weight loss surgery because to me it's much more than that. Um, and it made me very emotional and obviously it's something that's going to stick with me now for some time that my uncle who, by the way, um, became my second father after my father passed away. My dad passed away when he was 56 years old. Um, he had brittle diabetes. He ended up dying from congestive heart failure. Um, and those were both things that I was experiencing and losing my father when I was 26 and he was 56 was just too soon because my dad and I were very, very close. Um, it's been 22 years now since his passing but I still feel like it was just yesterday. And so knowing that I have dodged that bullet, you know, I'll often say it was either I was gonna die on the table or I was gonna die trying to live. 
And for me, it was the best decision I could have ever done. Like, having my kids was a great decision, but I, I feel like this is right up there with it because, with that, because I feel like if I had not made this decision, that I would still be in so much pain and I would still be so miserable and I would be struggling every day to survive beyond the illnesses that I had. And I'm just so grateful. I am so grateful that I was able to go and have this done. Um, I was so grateful that insurance covered it. I was so grateful to have one of the best doctors and s surgery staff that I could have ever possibly had. I mean, they're a teaching hospital. They teach how to do bariatric surgery. Um, I am so grateful that I had such a great program to be part of six months prior to the surgery and know that if ever I need support or if I have questions, I can run to them anytime. I did that this morning with my pain, right? I went to my support group and asked them if anybody has experienced that. I went to my nutritionist, my dietitian, and I asked her why I was getting hungry at night because I felt that staying up later, I was getting hungry again around 10, 11 o'clock at night. Being able to get answers from that and her saying that it's probably because you're not really eating enough during the day because I told her that I do shakes primarily for breakfast and lunch and then I try to have something at dinner. And she said to try to have more substantial food during the day so that I don't get hungry at night. You know, so it's just the everything that I have gone through has been such a blessing to me. Um, and I have been so open. My, my life has been such an open book with people that they come to me and ask me questions about it that I lovingly share information about that I feel like people are able to have an educated decision on whether or not this is the right route for them. Now, I can't tell you if it's the right route for you because I'm not who you are. But I certainly can share my experiences with you so that you know how it worked for me. You know, I think it's unfortunate that people typically share things when things aren't going well. When things are not going well, that's usually when people are vocal. And we forget to share the things that are going well so that people understand that there are so many different sides to making a decision that I just, I, I, it makes me sad to think that most of what is shared is the negative stuff. Um, you know, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to dote on that. I feel like at four months out, I have learned that I cannot have greasy foods because it will make me ill. I cannot have fried foods, which obviously would be greasy. But yesterday at the funeral, they had a thing after where you could go and they had hot dogs and hamburgers and potato salad, not potato, macaroni salad. Um, what else? Oh, strawberry and spinach salad. Um, so there were a few things that I could eat. Um, but in the same sense, I grabbed a burger without the bun and everything else thinking that I would be fine. But wow, was it greasy. And the first bite that I took, I was like, ugh this isn't going to happen. Um, you know, so I'm learning my biggest downfall still to this day that I struggle with every day, at least three times a day <laughs> is slowing down how fast I eat. I tend to eat on the run. And that's been something that I have done since I was a kid. So it's a hard one to break. Um, I have been able to accomplished the don't drink half an hour, don't drink half an hour before or after a meal. Um, I have accomplished that, so I feel good about that. Um, I'm getting better at the choices that I'm making uh, in regards to knowing potentially how it could have been cooked um, if I didn't do it myself. Um, but that, that one piece of slowing down while I eat is still a struggle for me, and it has to be a very mindful event um, while I'm eating and it's a very important one because dumping syndrome 
is a real thing and it's serious. Um, I can say that I have vomited three or four times, um, three or four times since surgery. And I, in the same token, have had a lot of episodes where I get very sweaty and hot flashes and nauseous, but just don't vomit. Um, and it's usually caused by me eating too fast. Um, I think the vomiting ones, sorry for the TMI, but it's part of this whole thing, right? Um, is that I ate the wrong foods. Wrong foods want to come back up. Eating too fast just makes me get nauseous and sweaty. And that in itself is just not a good feeling. So I try not to do it, but I always get reminded after why I tried not to do it. <laughs> So four months out, I'm doing great. I've lost potentially about 73 pounds so far. Uh, my highest weight was 254 pounds, almost 55, almost 255. Um, and I am currently at about 177. Um, so I've done well with my weight loss. It has slowed down now and I think it's because I'm getting closer to um, my target weight which I'm hoping to be around 150 155 um, and so I've got about 25 pounds 20 ish pounds left to go um, which from what I understand that once you get to that mark you start to slow down um, which I'm okay with because I don't want to like keep losing and go too fast and too far beyond what I should be losing so um, so yeah, that's pretty much my update for my four months out. Um, I have been getting rid of clothes. I went from a size 20 and I'm now in a size 14 12s. Um, I'm fitting in some 12s depending on who makes, who, who the brand is, who makes them. Um, so that's exciting. Um, I haven't done my inches in a while. Probably a good time to get that started, um, and do that again. And um, I have a new scale. My new scale is the healthometer, um, and it has water percentage as well as fat percentage, um, and it fluctuates every time I weigh myself, which I think is normal. Um, so I don't know. My six-month follow-up is in November. Um, and that's when I think that they're also going to be checking my vitamin levels. So I'm anxious to see what that comes out to and to visit with the doctor. And yeah, so very excited about this. I, I hasn't stopped. I feel fantastic. Um, my skin changed. My color of my hair changed. I don't have as much gray. Um, lots of changes with my body itself and my chemistry in my body. Um, so hope you enjoyed the update. Uh, love hearing your comments of support. I love it. Love it. Love it. You guys have been fantastic. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing day and better yet, go make it an amazing day for somebody else. I'll talk to you later. Bye.